Hey, future millionaires, this is Phil from Next Chapter Financial Solutions and Services. In this video, we're going to do something different that we've never done before. What we're going to do is we're going to review a four of a 401k account. And more than that, we're going to do a deep dive on four of those options in that 401k account and then see what the account would look like after a few years of investing in that account consistently. But before we jump into this 401k deep dive, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. This helps the video reach more people. And ultimately, that's what our goal is, to reach as many people as possible, to inspire them, to take action, and in this case, take action in your 401k. Okay, let's jump into our first ever 401k review. Uh, and this 401k has lots of mutual funds. So to do this review, what we're going to do is first off a quick recap of what uh, mutual funds are and how to buy them. Next, we're going to review what the options are within this 401k. This 401k has about 31 mutual fund options, uh, three in foreign, uh, two in core bonds, uh, four with large, uh, four with mid cap, uh, one with uh, moderate allocation and one with real estate and two small values and finally 14 different target funds. For the sake of time, this review will focus on four different options. One will be a large cap, the second will be a small cap, third will be a mid cap, and then finally you'll have an international. And why are we taking this approach? Well, this gives us the opportunity to have a broad perspective and not overly concentrated in one specific sector. Time for that quick recap of what a mutual fund is. So quick recap, mutual fund is a portfolio or a group of stocks or bonds or other investment securities. And then the investors now have access to a diversified amount of stocks or bonds in that mutual fund. And to do it, mutual funds are divided into many categories. So if you haven't watched the other video, this is how you buy a mutual fund. Uh, determine which account you're going to buy it in, whether it be an IRA or a brokerage account. You open the account with the investment broker. Then you decide on how frequently you're going to invest. Usually we recommend uh, bi-weekly, weekly, or even monthly. Then you set it up to be automatic. So it, it you are able to save consistently. And <clears throat> most mutual funds are available in employer uh, plans. So that's 401ks and such. And that's why we're doing this review and we're highlighting again what a mutual fund is. Here's a recap of how our fund review is going to go. For each uh, fund, we're going to review the fund category, a description, sector and country weighting, shareholder, some shareholder information, expenses and fee recap, top holdings, and then finally performance. And at the very end, we're going to take it to the spreadsheets and we're going to see what this looks like if you invested in all four consistently. Starting out our list is our uh, large cap value um, with um, MFS uh, value fund class six, um, which goes by the call of M E I K X. This fund started in June of 2012. This is a large value fund that invests in stocks in the U S uh, about 70% of his holdings are in the U S top 10, top 10 holdings for this one, JP Morgan, Johnson, Johnson, Comcast, Cigna, Conco Phillips, Texas Instrumentals, and Progressive Corp. And look at that weighting. Look at that allocation weighting. 70, roughly 75% in large value. And then you've got a small amount in small value and foreign stock. So this is what I like about doing these deep dive reviews. Um, you kind of put the litmus test or confirm what they're stating. They said it's a large value. And guess what? 75% in large value. So let's look at some of that shareholder information for this one. Uh, it's been around since uh, June of 2012. There's no uh, $0 minimum investment. Subsequent investment is $0. And this is available both in IRAs, IRAs uh, as well. And it's also available for um, auto investing. Why do I bring this up? Because if you're one of those persons that is just loving their options in their 401ks, it's a good idea. If you think this is the one for you, see if it's available in your own personal account, in your IRA account. And if not, you could also find ones that are very similar to it and then put it in your IRA account. So it's a good idea to really do a third review of what your options are. Okay, so with this uh, value, uh, large value fund, you have an expense ratio of 0.44%. So what that means is for every $10,000 annually, you would be charged a fee of $44. But let's look at what the performance is. As of August 31st, uh, first off, our year, one year of performance was 7.28. Our three year was 10.72. Our five year was 7.82, and finally, our 10 year was 9.66. Not bad. 
Now, let's move this on to our second fund. Our second fund is a small cap by T. Rowe Price. This uh, small cap uh, fund started in January of 1998. The objective of this fund is to seek long-term capitalization uh, by investment primarily in common stocks of small cap companies. Running down some of the companies that are in the top 10 holdings. You got Manhattan Associates. You got uh, a waste systems company, SPS Commerce, a technology company, a Comfort Systems US, uh, Churchill Downs, and the Builders First Source. So it's a wide variety of companies. In fact, let's look at how it breaks down when you look at the actual sector allocation. So you got about 23% industrials and business services. You got 22% in uh, healthcare, 18% technology, and then 12% consumer discretionaries. So that right there makes up well over 50%. Then you've got some financials, energy, consumer staples, materials, communication services, real estate, and finally utilities. You've got a wide variety of, of uh, investments in this uh, small cap sector uh, breakdown. So look at this shareholder information, a little different from the last one. First off, this fund's been around since uh, January of 1998. Uh, the minimum investment um, is $2,500. Subsequent minimum investments is $100. And if you're doing this in your IRA, call out on this one, your minimum investment would be $1,000. So uh, in your 401k, they likely negotiated something different. Obviously, I don't have full just, um, access to uh, that information. That's something that's negotiated on the level of uh, corporation to corporation. But this is a great way to uh, um, get insights on what this one would be like if you want to buy it, not outside of a 401k. Okay, now let's take a look at that expense ratios. This one has 0.8. So for every 10,000, 0.8%. <clears throat> so for every ten thousand dollars you had invested, it would be roughly eighty dollars uh, annual anticipated annual fees. But let's take a look at the performance. So our one year we have got twelve point two nine, our three year five point five eight, our five year five point two four, and our ten year nine point nine nine. So roughly ten percent. And this is what this one uh, performed like. So they um, had some uh, pretty good investments over the long term, uh, no negatives. And that's one of my criteria. I'll be very honest with you. Um, you wonder why uh, 31 became four really quickly. I, I kicked out uh, a good few that had negative in one year and three year. Sorry, negatives don't work. I'm not, I'm just not doing reviews on negatives um, unless it's a wild sector play that um, uh, we could have a really good in-depth discussion on. Okay, let's jump into fund number three, the Caroline Eagle Midcap. This midcap uh, started in January 2006, and it normally focuses on investments about 65% in assets that are um, in companies that are in the middle of the growth cycle. So they're not a small cap, and they're not a large cap. They're right smack dab in the middle. Now let's take a look at what uh, the top 10 holdings are. You've got uh, a waste company, uh, Waste Connections. We've got uh, Lululemon. Uh, Granger, uh, a technology company, Chipotle, uh, Baker Hughes, um, a power systems and uh, Vail Restor Resorts. All right. Um, now let's take a look at what that breakdown looks like by sector. Look at that technology, 21% industrial cyclicals around 18% rounded up non-durables around 14% rail trade, 12% services, 11% health, other financial, consumer durables, and energy. You've got a nice spread all around small cap companies. Okay, now we look. let's look at those investor information that you should know. So, uh, first off, in, again, uh, inception was in January 20, 2006. Minimum investment is about $10,000. <clears> and then um, IRA minimum is $0, actually. So, they lowered it um, on the IRA side. Um, and then it's available um, uh, auto for auto investment as well. Okay, like we always say, it's important to know uh, what the expenses and performance are. So the expense ratio ratio for this one is 0.73. So that means for every ten thousand dollars, you'd have about seventy three dollars in annual expenses. And then what does the performance look like? You've got a one year at six point four, three year three point six eight, a five year of seven point four five. And finally, in a 10-year of 11.71. Rounding out this fund review is our Americans European Pacific Growth Fund. This one's an international fund. Um, 
that started in 2009. It has the objectives of seeking growth through capitalizations um, on companies that are outside of the U.S. Okay, so since this is an international fund, you're going to have a bunch of companies that are not as well known in the U.S. Um, so I'm going to focus on the ones that I can say their names without completely butchering it. Um, you've got some short-term investments. That's probably some type of uh, international money market. Uh, then you've got Novo Nordisk. That's a biomed. Um, then you've got ASML Holdings, NV, ADR, um, Reliance Industrials, Taiwan Semiconductors. I've actually done a different video where I just saw a sector um, on a, a sector fund that had semiconductors. Uh, so they're huge in the semiconductor space and they had great returns in 2023. Airbus, AIA Group, and uh, those are all the ones I could pronounce. But now let's look at those allocations. Um, because this is a uh, international fund, we're not going to see a lot uh, in the U.S. So you don't have large cap. You have a very small amount of large cap. Uh, you've got a uh, no and large value, a small, account, a small amount in large growth. And look at that. Foreign stocks, 66%. So they're keeping up to what they said. They're going to do a uh, large amount international. And then you've got 10% international growth. So they said 70% a couple slides back. And look at that. Over 70% is in international space. And then uh, look, you've got some foreign bonds as well. And that's probably what's driving that short-term investments as well. Now, to round out this fund review, we're going to look at the expense ratio and then the performance. Our expense ratio is 0.46%. So for every $10,000 you had invested, you would have about $46 of expenses annually. One year performance is about 14.11. Three year, 1.26. Five year, 4.09. And finally, the 10 year, 5.9. Drum roll time. It's time. We're going to take this to the spreadsheets. So what if we invest in all four funds consistently for five years? We're going to take a look at what that looks like and how it all panned out. Before we jump into the numbers, just a reminder, past performance is not a complete indicator of what future performance will be, but it's a, a good way to help us do some analysis and uh, future thoughts of what it could be. So again, past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. So. Uh, let's take a look at uh, this scenario. We're going to say someone's 35 and for rounding purposes, they make about 100K. And as a reminder, we have uh, four funds. But first up is our large cap, then our small cap, our mid cap, and then our international. We've plugged in all the returns. So we've got the one year, the three year, the five year, the 10 year. And let's just do some analysis. So this company, again, so we're doing a 401k review. This company, I've been told, um, they do a 3% match when you do up to 6%. So 6% and then you get a 3% match. Look at that. 6,000 annually in your 401k, uh, $3,000 match, making you have a total of $9,000. And as a reminder, reminder, the current federal max is 22,500. We're going to do a little trick there to see if uh, what would it look like at the end if we went all the way up there. So Again, we look in our returns. We've got ranging in one year, one year uh, returns ranged from as low as 6.4 all the way up to 14.11. Our five year ranged from as low as 1.26 in your international space to as high as 10.27. Uh, five year low end 4.9, uh, high of uh, 7.82. But when we do that 10 year, um, we've got a good blend here, frankly, um, you all rather high, well over uh, 5%. So low end 5.9 and then high end 11.17. Um, so let's see what that would look like. So here we go. Jumping over to it. All right. We assume also the person was in their thirties. So they've got some, uh, full flexibility to kind of, uh, really, uh, do some good juicing on the, uh, juicing and investing, uh, in consistently. So. Here we are. Um, this person had a five year. Uh, we did a five year projection to start. So they invested $30,000. Their growth on their uh, employee contribution was uh, roughly 11%. So that's blended between all five. Uh, that was $6,000. Their employer match, however, was 15%. And you enjoyed another 6% on top of that. So they had a total balance of 54,000. And then the breakdown, they, you, the employee invested $30,000. The uh, your growth on your thirty thousand dollars was six thousand dollars, and then your employer match was fifteen, and then uh, growth was uh, three thousand dollars on the employer match, giving you a total of fifty four thousand. But let's take it one step farther. Let's take a look at what it would be like if you had a ten per a ten year. Okay, how do the numbers change if we go to ten years? Let's see. 
Whoa, 152. 10 years. All right. 152. So in 10 years, again, consistently doing that 6%, you had $60,000 of uh, employee contribution. You had growth of about 41,000, 42,000 rounded up on your $60,000 in 10 years. Your employer did a $30,000 and they had growth. Uh, the growth there was about 21,000, giving you a total of 152. Now let's go crazy intense to really show people what this could really be. All right. So let's say you went for the federal max. You've been working your budget and you grew, you got to that point. And that's why I'm giving people grace and I'm giving you the example of someone in their thirties, right? I don't expect someone who's 22 to pull this off. If they do, awesome. <laughs> but let's just assume 30s and higher, right? So, 2.5, boom, all right? Giving you that full federal max. And we do the spreadsheet to also stop you from, you know, trying to go over the federal max. So you can't do 30. We've built it in so it stops you from going above it. So, 22.5, boom. In 10 years, you'd have about 433. Again, so you did 22.5 and you stuck with it consistently and you budgeted well, so you were able to stick with that. Um, and, you know, maybe you got some bonuses and raises along the way, but let's anyway, 22.5. All right. Your investment would have been $225,000. That makes sense. 22.5 uh, times 10. Your growth on your investments, your contributions, 157. Your employer match is still 30, and the employer growth on their match would have been uh, 21. So, I just want to highlight here, it's possible to build up some serious money in 10 years at, when you get to the point where you could really uh, maximize your 401k if that's what you want to do. Um, obviously, you could do a mix of this and an IRA, but it is completely possible, and these investments are available in your 401k. And if you're the type of person that says, the only way I'm going to invest um, is through my 401k. Uh, I still want to try to strive and get a big number. In 10 years, you could get a really big number. And think about this. If you did this twice, and so 20 years, you could have well over $800,000 or even higher. Um, and if you and a life partner or spouse did something very similar together, jointly, you could be well over a million, almost guaranteed, um, assuming their investment options had similar health uh, performance. I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, we put a lot of work in this spreadsheet and I uh, really have a lot of fun doing this analysis. So again, um, take a look at your 401k, think about the options, budget well, and hopefully this inspires you to take control of your finances and put yourself in a position to build some long-term wealth. Because this money, after age of 59 and a half, is available for you to withdraw and live on in retirement. This will help pad that social security. Let's not depend only on social security to get you to uh, retirement. This video is brought to you by Next Chapter Financial Solutions and Services. So please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you enjoyed this video, also drop a comment. It is our goal at Next Chapter to provide you with information to help you take action to improve your financial situation. Please check out our links on our Etsy page for printables and files to help you take action. We also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Our goal is to help our customers determine a clear path to achieving their financial goals. So if this is something you are interested in, please click the link below to contact us. Talk to you soon, and I hope you enjoyed the video.